Hey everybody, I've got exciting news for all of you Tears for Fears fans. They just announced that they have a new album called The Tipping Point that's going to be releasing. And the album's going to be dropping on February 22nd, 2022. Now, in, I think it's pretty cool because if uh, you look at that all in numbers, it's 0222022022. I think in England, uh, they actually have the days and the month different from how it is in United States, so it would be 2202-2022. So the first four numbers and the last four numbers would be a mirror image of each other. Probably did this on purpose just to be fun, and I'm here for it. But anyway, I'm gonna talk about their new single called The Tipping Point at the end of the video, so make sure that you uh, stay tuned for that. So with the news of Tears for Fears' new album coming out, I wanted to rediscover their classic album, Songs from the Big Chair. Now I can definitely tell you Songs from the Big Chair is absolutely one of my favorite albums from the 80s and it's an album that I go to all the time and listen to because I think it's just a fantastic album from beginning to end. And I wanted to share with you like the reason why I like the album. So before we continue on, if you're new to the channel or if uh, you've been watching the channel but you just haven't done it yet, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you get notifications every time a new video comes out. It, that's the absolute best way you can support this channel is by watching the, you know, watching the shows and uh, by subscribing. So that would be fantastic if you could do that. Okay, let's start with song number one. Song number one is Shout. Everybody knows Shout. This is one of their biggest hits that they ever had. This is a, it's, it's, it's very anthemic and it's an anthem meant for everybody to sing along with. Um, it's got a kind of a, what, I, a, what I would consider a very dark keyboard progression and uh, very heavy drums. And it's not like anything else that they had done previously, which they only had one album before this. And they also included the guitar, which was a little bit different than, you know, what they're used to also, which I really like. I like the guitar throughout this whole album. So I think Shout, I mean, I don't, I don't have to sit here and explain Shout. Everybody knows Shout. I think it was a really good start of the album. And, uh, and you have to listen to it as though you've never heard it before and listen to it with that kind of an ear and uh, just try to think, you know, is this a really good way to start an album? It, it really was. Then song number two is called The Working Hour. It's a huge contrast between Shout and The Working Hour. It's just completely two different sounds. And, and I think it worked fine. It was fine. It has a really nice intro with that sax and then that keyboard. Then comes in the uh, percussion holding off the vocals for two minutes. Like, you know, it's just basically an instrumental for two minutes and then the vocals come in. Uh, I think it's a very interesting choice for a second song. And I found uh, lying around on the internet, both of the uh, performers for Tears for Fears call the working hour their favorite track on the album, thanks to the saxophone. They said the saxophone was always part of the working hour because of the riff. And the main saxophone riff is extremely important and powerful. And it's got that sort of crying quality to it. So it's not my favorite song, but uh, I think it's a really good second song. And like I said, it's a huge contrast between Shout and The Working Hour. So very interesting. Then it gets into song number three, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Everybody Wants to Rule the World is a more upbeat and very uplifting sounding song, but the meaning is not uplifting at all. It's a song about power and its drawbacks. And again, you have a lot more guitars. And of course, everybody knows the song. I don't have to sit here and explain it to you. But what I found interesting in Everybody Wants to Rule the World, um, I saw it listed here as a new wave and synth pop song. The song is set in the key of D major with a 12-8 time signature and a tempo of 116 beats, beats per minute. And the band stated that the driving shuffle rhythm was influenced by Simple Minds' 1983 song Waterfront and Lynx's 1981 song Throw Away the Key. So it, it, very interesting that, um, that they were going for a particular sound. And more interesting is the fact that it has a 12-8 tempo. And I... I so you people that are like music enthusiasts, that, that may be an interesting factoid there for you, but uh, very cool. So song number three is Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Now, by the third song, we already have their two major hits, which is Shout and Everybody Wants to Rule the World. So 
usually when you have an album where they put all the hits at the top, it's kind of like, uh, what's the rest of the album going to sound like? Well, let's keep going and find out. All right. Song number four is called Mother's Talk. Uh, this was actually their first release. They released the song in a, an attempt to mimic the sound of Talking Heads, which I am not a fan of Talking Heads. If you like Talking Heads, comment down below and tell me, because I don't, I've never heard of anybody who actually listened to the Talking Heads. I've, I've, never heard, I've, ne- I've never met a Talking Heads fan, so let me know. I find Mother's Talk to be very bold, very hard-hitting, and actually a very good choice of the first song. I think if they wanted to make a statement that they're not the same band they were on the first album, I think Mother's Talk was a really good choice. It, it wasn't as big as Shout and Everybody Wants to Rule the World, but I think it did deliver that message. I love the bass. Uh, I, I just absolutely love the bass breakdown close to the end. It, it's, it's so much experimental aspect to the song. So again, I, I I think it's a fantastic song. Then we go into song number five, which is called I Believe. Now, sorry if I'm looking at my notes. I have, these are my notes. I thought the song started with the piano. It, you know, if you, and, and I guess when you ever listen to the tape, you know, the sound quality is not that good. And I didn't realize that they had a backward sounding like beat a drum beat before the piano hits. I I heard it and I'm like, where did this come from? Never heard that before, but that beat sets that tempo. Then here comes the piano and they end up using lots of piano, lots of piano and like a slow, like a swing type beat. And and then you have that saxophone. It's killer. I mean, this is this song. I believe it has such a particular mood to it. And and if you're really if you're listening to the song from the beginning, shout the working hour, everybody wants to rule the world, mothers talk, I believe you don't have two types of songs back to back that sound anything like, but at the same time, it sounds like it was all on purpose. It, it's this phenomenal album. I really like it. All right, let's get to song number seven. Song number seven is called Broken. Now, I like the transition between I believe and Broken. And if you're listening to the record or the tape, I believe is actually the first song on the second side. So it was meant to have this nice transition between I believe and broken and broken is a very upbeat groove featuring an electric guitar once again. And it was composed when they first wrote the song, it was supposed to be a segue. They were creating a segue or like an introduction into head over heels but they created Broken to be that segue into Head Over Heels. And it it really comes across as an instrumental, like a jam session is really all it is. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, actually at the one minute, 42 minute mark, vocals come in. So I I like Broken. I think it's a really nice song. It's, It's almost like a nice twist, you know, something I didn't expect, which I really enjoy in music. I like hearing things that I didn't expect to be there. And that's this song. And maybe that's why I like this album so much, because every time I hear a new song, I like the song and it keeps my attention. But I'm like, wow, I didn't see that coming. And that's broken. And then it segues, broken segues beautifully into Head Over Heels, which is my favorite song on the album. I love Head Over Heels. I think this segue and broken and going into Head Over Heels is a highlight of this album. The piano intro uh, it's great. It's so simple. And, and I, I love the sound. It's a nice riff. Whoever wrote that was, was genius. And I just think it's an overall great song. And besides the vocals, it's, it's actually the bass that I listen to on the song more than anything else. It just catches my attention. I love the bass on this. And when you get close to the end of Head Over Hills, it sounds like it could be like, like the closing song. Like the, it gets into that you know, anthem type closing sound that I I would be okay if this was the end of the album. But then it segues right back into Broken, the same way Broken segued into Head Over Heels. I love this. I absolutely love this. This is just great stuff. And that's why I love this. This part of the album is my favorite part of the album. So the fact that they put the hits at the beginning, which Head Over Heels was a hit too, but shout and everybody wants to rule the world is the two songs people would name first. And then you have this, it, this is just great stuff. And, and it, it was all done on purpose 
So it's just really, really good stuff. Then you get to the end of the, the, the second half of Broken, the end of Head Over Heels slash Broken. You've got that live audience because they, would, they actually would perform this in front of a live audience. And that was kind of how this song derived. And then that segues into the last song, which is called Listen. I think this is brilliant also because if they stopped Head Over Heels and Broken all the way, he had like a clear stop and then Listen started. I think it would go, you'd be like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I'm buying this because the the transition between the two songs, it, it, may, have, it may have sounded out of place, but since they put the audience cheering, it sounds like it's just cheering into the next song, like like this is all on purpose. And it does so the cheering does not allow this contrast to to enter your mind. You don't think about it. You you don't go, ooh, what's well, so different? You just keep listening, which is what you're supposed to do. And the transition into listen comes across like an encore. But it comes across again. This is mainly an instrumental song, but 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 it's not technically because there's two verses. Well, besides that chanting they do throughout the whole song, pretty much they only sing two different verses in the song, and uh, and the difference between the the music throughout the song, and then when they get to the verse, it almost sounds like it's a medley. It's, it sounds like two different songs pieced together, and I like that. I think that's fantastic. And then you have that abrupt end you know, with a chant just going to the very end and just boom, it just kind of fades out really fast. I think this is brilliant. I love this album. Have I said that? I absolutely love this album. I, I think it was done well. I think it's got it's got really good hits on it. It's got very good segues. It's got very good transitioning. The sequence is perfect. This is a this is an album that was well done, and I, it will be. Probably one of my top, probably my top 20 favorite albums of all time. Now let's talk about Tears for Fears' newest album, which is called The Tipping Point. Now, like I said, The Tipping Point is going to come out on the 22nd of February in the year 2022. So that's going to be 2202-2022. That's pretty cool. But this is the first single. Um, the first single is by the same name. It's called The Tipping Point. And this is the first time they've released an album since 2004. So it's been, a, it's been a while. And in the song, they both sing. They both sing the entire song together, which at first I, I was like, who's singing? Which one is it? I, I can't tell. Is it Kurt? But it's very haunting. And I think it's supposed to be because this is talking about the events and the struggles. You know, we, we know about the 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 death and all that that just happened that created this the idea for the song and the sound behind it and and the beauty of it this particular I mean I've already heard the song if you've not heard the song I'll put uh, a link in the description down below so you can listen to it you can watch the video it's it's nice these guys don't look anything like they did in 1985 and they look fantastic actually um, I think they look really good and they st- still sound really good together and the music is, is still good. Um, I'm excited. And the, the beauty of it, you know, I think they were trying to get uh, a team of writers together and, and just try to create this smash hit album. And it was just not going well. So they just, so Kurt and Roland, they got an acoustic guitar just like they did in the very beginning of, of the of tears for fears. And they just sat down in the room and they just started writing and they started playing stuff and they came up with a lot of the material on this album. And I think that's why this album is going to be great. So I'm excited for the album. Again, it's going to come out on February 22nd of next year, 2022. And, uh, I think this may be, uh, I think it may be worth paying attention to because, you know, tears for fears, they're pretty good. All right, let's talk about what's on my mind. Uh, there's something that I wanted to say, and, and this is what's on my mind. Um, this channel is for fun. This channel is so I can hang out with you guys and we can you know, talk back and forth and we can learn together and we can expand what we know. And it's, all, it's mostly opinion-based. So being that this is opinion-based, these are going to be opinions. And of course, I'm going to be throwing in some facts here and there. 
and I want to do that as much as I, I, I can, but this is for entertainment. This is for people who really love music and who really love the particular things that I'm talking about, you know, like Duran Duran or like today, Tears for Fears. And I'm also very, very into freedom of speech. I think your freedom to say what you want to say is, is very important. And I think that's something that's definitely being infringed upon in our society, you know, especially here in the United States. So I definitely don't want to contribute to uh, uh, squashing people's opinions and being able to say what they want to say. However, if you get on my channel and you do nothing but say extremely hateful things and and curse and just basically just be as venomous as you possibly can, I'm gonna ban you. I will absolutely ban you. And I just did it last week for the first time in almost two years. No, it would be a year and over a year and a half because I do not agree with banning speech, but this has to be a safe environment. And it's not that I disagreed with anything that the person said, this, it's the way they said it. And I, I don't, I, I'm not gonna stand for it. And the fact that you guys are reading these comments as well, I don't know who's reading it. I don't, I have no idea. So what I'm doing, I wanna protect you as much as I can and uh, make sure that people like that are not gonna be on the channel. So I'm just, I'm just telling you, if, if you feel like using every, you know, profanity is fine, I don't care. But if you're venomous, if you're hateful, like ext extremely hateful, and you're and, and it looks like you're just out to just be extremely hateful and mean and rude i'm probably gonna ban you probably gonna ban you probably all depends on the kind of words that you use but have a different opinion for me i'm good with that disagree with me i'm good with that tell me tell me you think i'm wrong i'm good with that i'm not always right and that's just part of life no one ever is always right but uh i just want to let you know that uh, I'm all about free speech. I'm all about saying what's, what's on your mind and I invite it and I welcome it in this channel, but I do have a line. I do have a line. And that one person in close to two years, it would be two years in, in March, in almost two years. That's the first time anyone's ever crossed that line. And trust me, there's been a lot of people saying some pretty hateful stuff, but that pushed it. So anyway, that's what's on my mind. Thank you for listening. And I want to take a minute to talk about my sponsor, which is Holly Carter with The Magic for Less Travel. I'll put her information in the description down below uh, the video. And anytime, if you're ready to go on a Disney trip or Universal or a cruise, she is going to be the absolute best person to go to. So you can click on that link and get a no obligation quote, completely free, and find out exactly what it's going to take for you to be on your way to that next vacation. So make sure you check out Holly Carter with the Magic for Less Travel. She is the best. You can follow me on Instagram at Red Mug Music. Also, I'm on Twitter. Not so much, but I am on Twitter at Red Mug Music as well. And again, if you don't mind, subscribe to the channel. I would so appreciate it. You can even share it on, on any kind of social media, Facebook, you know, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. You know, just if, you know, make sure that we're sharing this channel with anyone that you think may enjoy it. That would be uh, very helpful as well. So thank you for doing that if you've already done it. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this week. I really appreciate you hanging out with me and I will see you all next week.